Well, hello, 1Ps. We are going to start algebra today. So our goal is I understand what variables or unknowns are and what is meant by like terms. So we're going to start by trying to understand what terms and like terms mean. So I've just got a bunch of numbers here and I want them sorted into sort the following math terms into groups that are the same. So there's various ways that you could sort this, but some make sense and some don't. Uh, first of all, we got a bunch of threes, so we could put all the threes together. And there's another three, and a three, and a three. So we'll put all the threes over here, and then we've got fives. And there's a five, and there's a five. So even as we sorted out our threes and fives, then we can split the threes and fives into the ones that have exponents. So we have three squareds here, and these over here that are not squared. So we've got the same base on these ones, but these ones have different exponents than these ones. And remember, if the, we only have one three, the exponent we understand is 3 to the 1. So we could understand that this is 3 to the 1. So the bases are the same and we separated them out into that in the first place that they have the same bases and then we split them up by exponents. And we could do the same thing over here because we've got some 5 squareds and then the rest of them are all 5's. So if we really want to group them together, we've got these ones here are definitely all the same. These ones here are all the same, and we can just draw our loops around them. Those are the way that we're going to sort them. So now, write a math statement using order of operations that would make it easy to find the total of all those numbers. Okay, um, I've got four threes. So how do I write four threes? Well, I've got four groups of three, means four times three. And over here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of five. So I've got seven fives. And then over here I've got one, two, three, four, four groups of three squareds. And here I've got one, two, three groups of five squareds. So if I want to write a math statement that would make it easy to add these all up, I would say I've got four thirds plus um, four three squareds plus seven fifths plus three five squareds. Okay, hopefully you followed all that. Now, in math, sometimes we don't actually know what this base is. Sometimes we give bases letters when we don't know what they are. So if I were to say that the threes were actually x's and the fives were actually y's because we don't know what they are, if I wanted to, to write an expression where I didn't know what they were, then this would turn into 4x plus 4x squared plus 7y plus 3y squared. And this is the kind of statement that we're going to be dealing with shortly. So let's have a look at algebra. What is algebra? When we use algebra, we put a letter, usually an x, in place of an unknown number. But many of the operations that we use on numbers can also be used with this number substitute, because the letter is a number substitute. For instance, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is like saying x plus x plus x plus x. Oh, and this turns into 4 times 3. So this can turn into 4 times x, only we don't usually use the brackets. And this down here is 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared. That can turn into 4 times 3 squared. And over here we've got 4x squared, so that can be 4 times x squared. Now let's see what this thing says here. 
The problem is I can add all the threes up and get a final answer, but I can't do that with the x's. I can simplify both expressions, make them into more compact looking statement by switching them to multiplication, which is what I just did up there. So this is the more compact statement um, here, and I could add all those up if I wanted to. I could actually get a number here if I wanted to, but this is much more compact than this. And here I can turn it into a much more compact statement by changing my addition into multiplication because we know that multiplication is actually a repeated addition. So the expression 4x is actually called a term. A term in math usually has a number called a coefficient. So in 4x this number 4 is the coefficient. Uh, and it has a letter, which we refer to as the variable. The operation between them is always multiplication. So 4x is another way of saying 4 times x. And as you can see, we probably aren't going to use the time sign since we're using the x, and they both look like the same thing. So going back up here, let's make sure we understand this, that if I have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, we can change that into 4 times 3. So when I have x plus x plus x plus x, I could change it into 4 times x, and this is the way we state it. And this is one of the reasons why when we were doing multiplication the other day, I did not use the time sign very often. I would put it in brackets and have just a, a number in front of it to mean times um, because the uh, time sign looks way too much like the variable x. Sometimes terms can have more than one variable. This has more than one variable. We've got an x squared and a y. So this is like saying 5 times x times another x because that's what x squared means. That means I have two x's multiplied together times a y. That would be the same as if I had say my x's were 3 and my y's were 5. If my x's were 3 and my y's were 5, I could actually get a number and say 5 times 3 times 3 times 5 and I could actually get a number. But I don't know what those numbers are. They might be 3 and 5 or they could be anything depending on the situation we want to use them for. Sometimes terms have no variables at all. Then it's called a constant term. So just the number 5, the number 5 is constant. It never changes. X and Y can change because sometimes they might be 3, sometimes they might be 5, so they're changeable. That's why they're called variables. But the term 5 is always 5. If it has no uh, variable with it, it's called a constant term. Now, like terms and unlike terms. Two terms are considered like terms if they have the same variables and those variables have the same exponents. They do not have to have the same coefficients. The coefficient might be the same, but it doesn't have to be the same. So let's highlight that they have to have the same variables and those variables have the same exponents. So example one, match up the like terms by either underlining or drawing shapes around them. So I'm going to use different colors to start with. I'll start with red and I've got a 5y here. We'll underline it with a squiggly one. Now remember, it has to have the same variable and the same coefficient, or sorry, and the same exponent, but not necessarily the same coefficient. So I'm looking for anything that has a y, just a y, not a y squared, not another variable with it, just a y. So is there another one through here? Yep, there's one. That matches up. So those two things are like terms. And is there another y along here? Nope. There's lots of them that have y's in them but they don't have just a single solitary y, which is what makes it a like term. So now I'm going to use blue, and we've got x cubed. So I'm going to put just a single underline on x cubed. Uh, this has an x cubed, but it also has a y, so that doesn't match up with that one. 
So I keep looking, I keep looking, I keep looking. There's no just single x cubes. So now let's take the green and I'm going to double underline this. This is a constant term. It has no variable at all. Is there another constant term here? Let's take a look. Let's go along. Uh, nope, all the rest of them have variables. So there's no like term with that one. Um, now I'm going to go back to my red again. I'm going to start circling things. So I've got 5x. We're looking for things that have just an x in them. Uh, there's one. It doesn't matter what the coefficient is, we're just looking for things that have the value, have the variable x, and there's one. So those three are all like terms. Um, let's go back to blue, and we have x cubed y. So let's put a blue square around x cubed y. We've got x cubed y right there. And over here, x cubed, oh, but that's y squared, so that doesn't work. But here's an x cubed y squared, so let's take green and put a green squiggly line around it, because x cubed y squared, they're going to go with each other. Now, is there anything we haven't dealt with yet? Uh, we've got these two things that don't have anything, and they actually are matched. There's an x squared and an x squared. So let's take, I'm going to take the red and just do three underlines x squared and x squared. So there, we've matched up all the like terms. To combine like terms, we simply locate all the terms that are the same and then add up their coefficients. You cannot combine unlike terms. So unless they have the same variable and the same coefficient, you can't put them together. But if they have the same variable and the same coefficient, we can put them together. Like this, 2x and 3x. If you have two x's and somebody gives you three x's, now you have five x's and you write them like that, five x. Another way of thinking of this, if you just want to think about it slightly differently, two x's mean an x plus an x because it's two times x. Multiplication means repeated addition, right? And then we're going to add three more x's, one, two, three. Well, all together we've got five x's, and if I want to put them back into my more compact form, uh, rather than adding x five times, I can do five times x, and we get back to that. So you just have to add up the coefficients. Now, combine like terms in the following expressions. 3x plus 4x. If I have three x's and somebody gives me four more, I now have 7x. Over here, those are all x's. Every single one of them are a like term, so I can just add up the coefficients. Now, you've got to be careful with the positives and negative signs here. I've got negative 12x plus 6x. I'm going to do this step by step. Negative 12x plus 6x. Negative 12 plus 6 is a negative 6x. And then I need that negative 4x on there. And let's think of this as that cancellation effect that I was talking about. There's not going to be any cancellation here because I have negatives and negatives. So if I have six negative x's and somebody gives me four more negative x's, now I have ten negative x's. Now looking down here, this one looks a little bit more complicated. I gotta find some like terms here. So I'm gonna do in blue first um, x squared and here's an x squared. So I've got 5x squared and another 4x squared. Now pay careful attention to the sign in front of it. If I get 5x squared and somebody gives me 4 more x squareds, I have 9x squared. Now in red, I'm going to say here's a 3y and a negative 11y. I have to put 3 and negative 11 together. Well, 3 and negative 11 together is negative 8. And of course, they're y's. And lastly, let's use the green, I've got negative 7x's and negative 6x's. If I put, have 7 negative x's and someone gives me 6 more negative x's, I now have 13 negative x's. And the signs that you get when you combine like terms just become the sign in between the terms in the question. Okay, let's keep going. Here's another one. Oh, this is getting more complicated. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go back to using my colors again. Let's start with blue. 
I've got 3x squared y and I'm looking for a match. So what makes it a match is this x squared y. So I'm looking, that's x squared y squared, so that doesn't work. x cubed y, x squared y squared, there isn't anything. So since there's no match, I just write down 3x squared y. Now let's take my red pen here and I've got an x squared y squared and if I look through here here's another x squared y squared so I've got a negative 6 and a negative 5 together give me negative 11 x squared y squared. Let's grab my green and now I've got negative 7 x cubed y and there isn't another x cubed y so I just write down minus 7 x cubed y. Uh, let's take, I'm going to go back to my blue, but I'm going to circle 2xy, and is there another xy here? Oh, yep, there is. There is an 8xy. 2xy's and 8xy's give me 10xy's. And then this plus 3 on the end, it doesn't have anything to go with it either, so it's just plus 3. Now going down, oh, this is a second C, let's turn it into a D. Let's find some matches. So let's take blue and we've got an x squared and an x squared. Is there any more x squareds? Nope. So we're going to put them together. Positive 5 and positive 7 is positive 12 x squared. Then we've got negative 6x and positive 3x and positive 8x. So think about this. And you could actually write it down in order first if you wanted to. You could say 5x squared plus 7x squared and then write down negative 6x plus 3x plus 8x and then what's left over here, a negative 2 and a positive 7. So negative 2 plus 7. You could write it all down grouping all the like terms together first and then figuring them out, saying, okay, this is going to give me 12x squared. And then these three things together is going to give me negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3. And then another 8 is going to be positive 5x. And then over here, negative 2 plus 7 is going to give me positive 5. So what we actually end up with then is 12x squared plus 5x plus 5. And you could have done that straight off looking at here too. You don't have to write it out like this. If you can do that in your head, if you can say negative 6x plus 3x is going to give me negative 3x and then add in another 8x to get your 5x and then put your negative 2 and your positive 7 together to get the positive 5. If you can do all that in your head, go right ahead and do that in your head. Okay. What have we got next? Oh, that looks like the end of our lesson.